Hello, house. Are we enjoying ourselves? Thank you. Well, I decided to wait so that we can wrap everything together at the same time before you start bringing in your questions. I want us to start writing the questions down and who you are directing the question to. From Mama Awori, she introduced the importance uh, of women, their roles, and gave us definition, definitions of keywords in the topic given. She quoted Matthew 28 and uh, the Great Commission, and then gave a brief history of women's guilds in Nigeria. And then she told us that in Diocese of Awori, they have the Mothers Union, the Women's Guild, the Girls and Ladies Guild, the Boys Guild, and the Guild of Gentlemen. Then she spoke about the challenges. Idolatry, ignorance, poverty, lack of electricity, and syncretism. Then she went ahead to discuss the contributions they have made so far in uh, a worried diocese, which both the rural and the urban area, they agreed. They educate individuals, whether they are within the church or outside the church. They encourage, they empower, and they do seminars for skill acquisitions. Then they go on outreaches for medical, uh, on outreaches with medical supplies, with food items and um, clothing materials. They organized prayer meetings. They manage the little fund they have as much as possible to avoid wastages. Then they help individuals in the operation, in operation for cataract and glaucoma. They give health talk and then they treat people that, after testing them, they discover that they are sick, they give them medication. And I think that's probably because Mama Awori happens to be a nurse. Then she says something that is touching that when you work in the rural area, you must be ready to sacrifice, both financially and self-wise. Then she said they visit hospitals with supplies and to pray for the sick people they fund transportation, and then the widows and the widowers are taken care of. Then they foster friendship. There's market evangelism. There's visits to the elders, whereby they sing with them, read the Bible, and then they rejoice. Now for the urban area, Mrs. Johnson says that the women, the women role in the home, in the church, and the community cannot be wished away. That they are the basis for growth, to learn from each other and to increase. Then she went ahead to mention the creation story as well. And then she discussed so many women in the scriptures that have been helpful she mentioned Exodus 16:20. I believe she's talking about the judges, Deborah and uh, Aquila, Priscilla. Then the woman that was portrayed in Proverbs chapter 31, talking about a woman with 16 hands the virtuous woman. She gave a quotation that the home is where the story begins. And so, if we don't train them from the home, definitely nothing will be done. Then she said that women are not inferior to men. 
In the urban setting, she mentioned that the major problem they have is business. Mostly women in the urban setting, urban areas, they are career women, they are chief executive officers of their companies, and then they don't have much time to come for meetings. And so she says the women ministry takes the church to the home and then the home to the church. And that by going to their homes, they can easily increase the church of God. Then she mentioned the roles played by women in the church as choristers, wardens, auditors, accountants, lay readers, and that when you call for prayer and fasting, you only see, you see mostly, don't let me see only, you see mostly women because they are resilient and they are committed. And then she said there's one major challenge and that is discouragement from the men. Our fathers, we brought this topic to you not because I said it at the beginning, but because we want you to partner with us. Don't see us as a competitor. We are just there as a help meet. And uh, I try to put some things down. Now, the purpose of our being in the church is to grow the kingdom of God. And we want everybody to come back to the drawing table to see how we can cooperate and make this possible. And we, from the topic, we know that catalyst can be something, it can be somebody, it can be a group. So the women organization in each parish and in each Ajikinri or diocese, they are catalysts to bring about changes. Most often, clergymen don't go out to do the type of evangelism women do. We know you go to the homes to do, maybe give sick communion, visitation once in a while, but the way the women will put their touch to it is different. And for anybody, let's say we have somebody in the rural area, an elderly woman, the mother is in the rural area, then the daughter is in the urban setting. And then she calls the daughter, ha, ah, mama sent some people to come and greet me. They sang, you know, it will warm up the heart of the daughter or the son that is in the city, and then if they have been trying to move away from the church before, they can easily come back. From the two speakers, what I was able to deduce was that the women ministry, we have so many of them. And one, the mother's union is for just those people that are married, legally married in the church, or properly wedded in the church, and then the women's deed is, was founded to make sure to accommodate all the women that are second, third, fourth, and the rest of them. We all agree that women are more. They are married to some men in the churches, in our churches. So we have to make sure that we bring them in so that there won't be uh, exclusion amongst us. Then for the girls' guild and the ladies' guild, the guild of these ones are extension of the Mother's Union and the Women's Guild. And all this group together, their purpose is to educate, that is, spiritually. Most often, when you speak from the pulpit, many people don't get what you are saying. You have to come on a one-on-one -on -one basis, or you have to go closer to them. And more so, your sermon is well preached when you put it into practice. And that is what the women do. Then we, we talk about skill acquisition. I used to say something. See, Jesus returns. Work will not stop in the church. 
But we discovered that most of the work we do, we give to uneducated artisans. Most of our children in the city or in the rural area, they believe that once they go to church, uh, once they go to university or to tertiary institution, it ends there. Many of them, as we were coming this morning, I was telling that, that some of them, they, did, they studied automobile engineering or civil engineering. But if anything happens to their car, they cannot even attend to it. If they want to build a house, ask a civil engineer that did not know anything about building projects, has never gone for IT, you discover that they don't even know the diameter of the pipe they are going to use. And these are where the, ch the women came in for skill acquisition, empowerment, and the rest of it. If we have our youth in the church doing some of the things that we contract out, it will make the work of God easier. Then, relationship. Most often, we stop talking about sex. We stop talking about relationship. We groom the girls and we leave the boys outside. A well-groomed girl will marry a poorly groomed boy or man. At the end of the day, the thing will still amount to the same thing. We are back to square one. So the purpose of Mother's Union and Women's Gate is to make sure that these things are standing and that boys, girls, gentlemen, ladies, they are empowered. Know what it takes. Mama Awori said it, that they have counseling group in the assistant counseling group in Awori diocese to take care of this group of people before marriage. And I believe they can go a step further by including after marriage. Then we talked about care for the widows, the widowers, the homeless, the poor, the needy. And then the implication of all these things that we have come here to talk about is one, we need your permission. Yes, we agreed and we are submitting that you are the people that God called. And we need your permission to operate. Because if we go out there to do the work and we come back in and you are not happy with us, definitely the home will not be at peace. And if you don't give us the time in the churches that, okay, we want to say this, and you say there's no time, let us pray. There's nothing we can do about it. So that is that about permission, then we want you to see us as your helping hands, not competitors. And when it comes to raising funds, I believe that women raise funds better than men. I want to believe that somebody is here. When Lagos West started, there's this thing we call fat boxes. I don't know whether they're still using it fat boxes in January and uh, June. And so mama says that we should list the names, the list, give the list of people that contributed in January and in my church then. You discover that I have just about 20, 25 people coming with these fat boxes. They say they can't carry lunch box. That's what they call it. And this is a congregation of about 3,000 people so I came to Mama then. I did be that, see the problem. She, Mama said, no, 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 no. That's the way she wants it. So one day she came and she said, oh yeah, it was first Sunday in January, uh, in, of the year. She carried her fat box. I carried my own and about a few women, they followed. At the end of the day, we couldn't raise more than maybe 50,000 or thereabouts. I went back. Because you can change the narrative in your church or in your diocese. So she said, okay, what do I want? I said, let me do it the way I think it should be done. Then these people leave the names alone. Is it money you want or the lease? She said money. I said, okay, leave that. So I have one of the assistant priests then. I told him that I know daddy will say, 
we are already late. We cannot wait. Please, help me do this. So immediately they finished the general Thanksgiving said, we want to do for the women the first Thanksgiving for the year. Bram, we started. Everybody, man, woman, children, everybody joined. Do you know that from that single uh, Thanksgiving, we were able to raise about almost half a million naira. And that changed the narrative from that church since then. And Mama says, don't worry. No more list. I should go ahead and do whatever. Because even at that, I did not allow my people to say, are you taking all this to the diocese? I said, yes. We collected it for the diocese anyway. So what are we doing about it? So you can change, let the women bring on board what they know how to do best and let them assist you. Uh, once again, we want to thank you for listening. If you have your questions, we can have them now rolling in. <laughs> thank you very much. God bless you. The applause have just shown that all that you have told us, we, we accepted. But we cannot have our mothers, three of them, before us without expressing our appreciation to them. And to do that, I will invite one of our fathers, the Venerable Sunday of Guinea, from that of Lagos West, to come and do that. Baba, don't speak Ausa, don't speak Igbo, and don't speak Ijecha. Just go straight to the point and appreciate our mommies. <laughs> People of God, we have to appreciate our mothers for this great job they've done today. We realize that what they taught us is on a practical form. And we agree with me that they really went deep to know where they were supposed to be. From Mama, uh, Mama Badagri that even came out to, uh, first of all, let us know what we are here for. And uh, Mama Mainland, as well as Mama Awori, we want to thank the trio of you people because what you did is not a small job. Mama, our elders, we say, anybody, anybody that wants to use deer for breakfast, he must be ready to hunt at night. Deer is a nocturnal animal. So if you don't kill at night, you cannot use for breakfast. So we appreciate all the work you have done. And we want to thank you very much. But there are areas that you talk to us, and when we get home too, we will tell our wives. And you have taught us again the area that we men must go in the line that is up to for our women. Because our elder says, if a blind man decides to beat his child in, uh, in, the, in the market, those who does not know about it, they will receive from it. You know he's a bl blind man. He will be throwing the thing anyhow. So men can do this, but you have taught us today how we must cooperate with our wives. And uh, when next time come, we too will have our own position to tell you, Mama, because some of our women too, when you will tell them, some of them too, they don't take it, Ma. They don't, they don't take it, but we thank God for the wife that God has given many of us. But as I'm standing, Mommy, I know some priests that they are suffering from the hands of their, uh, their wives. Many of us have uh, even intervened. There are women that I know that will slap their husband at will. So all these two must be taken into consideration. So, but Mama, when you go to them too, please always tell them, we, they, we are called uh, a father in the Lord. And because we are father in the Lord, we must be father in the Lord to our women as well. Yes, though they say we are equal, but in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 1, the Bible says, why be submissive to your own husband? No negotiation there. We appreciate you, mommies. God bless you. It is well in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Thank you, Well, dear people of God, we want to bless the name of the Lord. 
We want to bless the name of the Lord for those far he has helped us today. We have, with the permission of the dean of the seminary, we have some books here written by some of us that are available for sale. Many girls are here. Choose whom you will serve. You know, Mama Awori just told us about idolatry in uh, Awori land. Incidentally, this is written by the Dean of Awori Diocese. That is Dr. Nelson Olushe Gwade Wale. Then we also have the dynamics of culture, syncretism, and effective ministry of the church, written by him as well. And the battle for the souls of humanity, the challenge of idolatry and mixed religion in Ota. When Mama was talking about uh, Ota, I said, Ota, the Aoriki is a, a Gomode Afidelia. That is, they use cutlass to fight. That's the Aoriki. In those days when they were constructing the bridge at Songo, and that was where the goddess was kept. The then president said that, ah, there's your goddess. You better carry it inside your town and let him be using the cutlass to fight there. That's just on a lighter mood. So we, the books are for sale. Please patronize him. And we also have about 11 books written by our facilitators on the clergy nutrition. That is Dr. Polu Olotano. It's also available at the book stand. We did announce that somebody mistakenly took a jota from the seminary accountant. Please check your jota if there's anything written at the back. It's very important. The information there is very, very important to the accountant. Please go and return it. She's going to exchange it for you for another jota. And as you do so, God will bless you in Jesus' name. We appreciate all and sundry. Because of our time, we'll not be able to go into details, starting from the dean, starting from the, our chief host, the Lord Bishop of Diocese of Lagos West, and the chairman of Archbishop Abiodun Adetiloe Foundation, the Right Reverend Dr. James Ulushola Odedeji. We appreciate all of them, and all our session chairmen, and those who have come to appreciate those who have done one thing or the other. And we pray that God will bless all of us in Jesus' name. Our lunch pack has been prepared diocese by diocese. So we go to the Adetiloye Hall and pick diocese by diocese. And as we do so, God will bless us. And those who have not registered, it is important. If you don't register, that is showing that you are not in attendance. There is a, a slip for registration. Let us make sure that we register. Tomorrow is another day. Let us be punctual, and God will bless us as we come in Jesus' name. Shall we rise as we pray? So I will invite uh, Venerable Mason to round up for us in prayer. We are saying thank you, Jesus. We are saying thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name, O oh Lord. Let's wave our hands to God. Give him praise, give him honor, give him thanksgiving. Thank God for keeping us through at the point we are about to live now for sustaining us. 
is your name, O Lord. Are we singing? Are we worshiping? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In all the earth, how excellent is your name. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you all excellency. We say be thou exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to say amen in the name of Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you for you started with us and you are running off with us. Thank you for being there for us. You are the Lord who neither sleep nor slumber just for our sake. Thank you for calling us from our different schedules of life and you made us to be in charge of souls. This is uncommon. This is rare. And Lord, we are not taking you for granted. Some of us will have been area boys. Some of us will have been wicked in the society. Some of us will have been nobody in the society. But Lord, you called us, you cleansed us, and you made us to be vessels in your household. And not just ordinary person, to be pastors, to be priests. Thank you, Father, for the interest and the trust that you have in us. And that is why we are here today. We are here to sharpen ourselves, to be recharged, to prepare better, to be able to face the people that you have paid and to ransom for them. Father, we are not taking all these for granted. And all that we have learned today, we appreciate you. Thank you for verses. Thank you for resource person. Those whom you are prepared to prepare us. So that we too will be able to prepare others. Not just for the church alone, but for eternity. And so God, we pray, we will not fall off from this plan and from this pattern in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, oh God, we will not miss the targets. Lord, we will not fail in our responsibilities in the name of Jesus Christ. All those things that we need as ingredients to be able to build the church of God on this same solid rock, you will grant to every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. As we go from here, Lord, we will not go away from your presence. And even after this lecture, may everything that we have learned continue to resonate in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the Lagos Seminary. Thank you for the Dean Ababa, the Right Reverend Dr. Adeyemi. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom at which this year's workshop is being arranged, especially the bishop's wife who have come to talk to us. Lord, we pray that as we go with all these packages, none of us, oh God, will fail to utilize all these tools to make the church grow in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. At last, we will not miss the kingdom of God. We bless you, O oh God, for our parishes. Continue to sustain the church and continue to use us to your own glory. We will be vessels unto honor and never unto dishonor. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have all prayed. The prayer of grace together. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. See you tomorrow.